153. Salvation can be thought of as a game that happy children play. It was designed by one who loves his children and who would replace their fearful toys with joyous games, which teach them that the game of fear is gone. His game instructs in happiness because there is no loser. Everyone who plays must win, and in his winning is the gain to everyone ensured. The game of fear is gladly laid aside when children come to see the benefits salvation brings. You who have played that you are lost to hope, abandoned by your father, left alone in terror in a fearful world made mad by sin and guilt, be happy now. That game is over. Now a quiet time has come in which we put away the toys of guilt and lock our quaint and childish thoughts of sin forever from the pure and holy minds of heaven's children and the Son of God. We pause but for a moment more to play our final happy game upon this earth. And then we go to take our rightful place where truth abides and games are meaningless. So is the story ended. Let this day bring the last chapter closer to the world, that everyone may learn the tales he reads of terrifying destiny, defeat of all his hopes, his pitiful defense against a vengeance he cannot escape, are but his own deluded fantasy. God's ministers have come to waken him from the dark dreams his story has evoked in his confused, bewildered memory of this distorted tale. God's son can smile at last on learning that it is not true. Today we practice in a form we will maintain for quite a while. We will begin each day by giving our attention to the daily thought as long as possible. Five minutes now becomes the least we give to preparation for a day in which salvation is the only goal we have. Ten would be better. Fifteen better still. And as distraction ceases to arise to turn us from our purpose, we will find that half an hour is too short a time to spend with God. Nor will we willingly give less at night in gratitude and joy. Each hour adds to our increasing peace as we remember to be faithful to the will we share with God. At times perhaps a minute even less will be the most that we can offer as the hour strikes. Sometimes we will forget. At other times the business of the world will close on us and we will be unable to withdraw a little while and turn our thoughts to God. Yet when we can, we will observe our trust as ministers of God in hourly remembrance of our mission and His love. And we will quietly sit by and wait on him and listen to his voice and learn what he would have us do the hour that is yet to come while thanking him for all the gifts he gave us in the one gone by. In time, with practice, you will never cease to think of him and hear his loving voice guiding your footsteps into quiet ways where you will walk in true defenselessness for you will know that heaven goes with you. Nor would you keep your mind away from him a moment even though your time is spent in offering salvation to the world. Think you he will not make this possible for you who chose to carry out his plan for the salvation of the world and yours? 
Today our theme is our defenselessness. We clothe ourselves in it as we prepare to meet the day. We rise up strong in Christ and let our weakness disappear as we remember that His strength abides in us. We will remind ourselves that He remains beside us through the day and never leaves our weakness unsupported by His strength. We call upon His strength each time we feel the threat of our defenses undermine our certainty of purpose. We will pause a moment as He tells us, I am here. Your practicing will now begin to take the earnestness of love to help you keep your mind from wandering from its intent. Be not afraid nor timid. There can be no doubt that you will reach your final goal. The ministers of God can never fail because the love and strength and peace that shine from them to all their brothers come from Him. These are His gifts to you. Defenselessness is all you need to give Him in return. You lay aside but what was never real to look on Christ and see His sinlessness. <laughs>